In this part we want to have a look at the spring embedder as it was defined by Eats. Let's first go through the model by Eats. What we have to do is we have to figure out what is this force for every vertex. And that depends on the repulsive and the attractive force. So resulting displacement vector for every vertex is just the sum of these forces. Now how does Eats model this? For the repulsive forces we imagine that we have magnets. And he defines that the repulsive force between two vertices is this formula. What do all these parts mean? This here is just the Euclidean distance between the two vertices. This here is the direction from vertex V to vertex U. So we put this force onto U, that means we have to direct it away from V because we want it to be pushed away. And this here, this is some repulsion constant. That constant you can choose yourself. Each said that the choice of 2.0 is usually a good one, so we will just use that for now. So looking at this, the further away these two are, the smaller the force gets. And since we don't want this to change linearly, we have the distance squared. The closer the two vertices get, since we have the distance of them squared in the denominator, the larger the force gets that moves them away. If they are very far away from each other, then this whole term here is really really small, so there's barely any force between them. Now what about the attractive forces? Eats want to model how a spring behaves between two vertices. And this is pretty well known. We can calculate what kind of forces work on two points which are the endpoints of a spring. And this we calculate with the following function. We take the logarithm of their distance divided by some L. And this is the ideal spring length. So this is the length of the spring where you have an equilibrium. So whenever you pull or you push them together, the spring always wants to get to this ideal length. And then we have this in the direction from U to V because this pulls as long as this term is positive and it pushes as long as this term is negative. Now if we look at this, if the distance is exactly L, then this here is a 1 and logarithm is one of 1 is a 0, so there's no force at all. If the distance is smaller than L, then this here becomes uh, smaller than 1, so the logarithm of it is negative and it pushes away. And if the distance is larger, then this here is larger than 1, so the logarithm is positive and it pulls them together. And then again we have some constant, the so-called spring constant, and it says that this constant you can choose as one, that's usually a good choice. However, there's one additional thing. We have these attractive forces, but we don't want vertices that lie on the same spring to also push away from each other. We've already modeled this here. So for our attractive forces, we remove the repulsive forces again if they are adjacent. We have already modeled this in this logarithm here. So this gives us the two forces, the repulsive force and the attractive force between any pair of vertices. How does the force diagram look like? So if we just want to plot these functions, at the bottom we have that u gets pushed away, at the top we have that u gets pulled to v. The repulsive function looks like this. The further away the distance, the smaller the force that pushes u away is. And if it's very close, then we have a huge force. The spring function is here. If we have exactly the distance that we want to have, there is no force. If we are farther away, then we pull. If we are too close, then we push. And the resulting attractive force looks like this. In the beginning, it is very huge to counteract the repulsive force. And then it gets closer and closer to the spring force as the repulsive force gets close to zero. Let's have a look at a demo. Here we have our Eats algorithm. And in the bottom right, we can choose the parameters. So we can choose what is the edge length we want to have, I put it here at sub 1. What is the repulsive constant, what is the spring constant, I put them at 2 at 1. And here I have a cooling factor, so that means that at every step the cooling factor gets multiplied with this. So in the beginning we have a 1, then 0 0.99, then 0 0.99 to the 2, and so on. 
Let's just try to run this. And then we see that after a while we get a quite nice layout of this graph. But these parameters have some huge impact. For example, if I say, well, here we have huge distances, if I move over here, this gets very small. So let's say we don't want this to be a 1, but a 10. What happens now? Now it takes a long time until well, we get to an equilibrium, and this is not a very nice drawing. It's even stronger if I put this to a 100. Then let's see what happens here. We have some forces, they pull and pull, but everything cools down before we get to some good values. The problem here is, in the repulsive forces, we don't have this L. The repulsive forces are quite small compared to this. So if we change this L from a 1, then we also should change these parameters, these constants, to get something good. And depending on how we choose them, let's say I make this very large here, we can get better drawings. This is not enough yet, as you can see. But if I also change the spring constant, then something very weird can happen in the beginning, but after a while we get to an equilibrium. Let's make this a bit smaller, and now we found a good choice. Here with these constants, we get a nice drawing uh, where we have the required length. And then we can also play around with this cooling factor. So if we make this much smaller, let's say 0 0.75, then we cool so fast that we get below this epsilon threshold and we don't even continue. But if I make this very large, then also some funny things can happen, as you will see now. And the problem here kind of is that the vertices get too close to each other and then they push each other away again. And they get very close and they push each other too far away. And then you have these very funny effects here where you can have a lot of stuff going on that happens when you don't cool down. Basically this is 0 0.9999, this is basically no cooling down at all. Then you get whatever this is, let's speed this up a bit. But this is not nice. <laughs> we don't get to an equilibrium at all. It takes a long, long, long time. And this basically goes on until we reach this K. Still we were lucky here that we got a nice drawing in the end. But it could also have ended at something like this. And that's not something we want. So choosing good parameters here is very important for the algorithm. And that's something we have to take care of. Let's briefly discuss this algorithm. The advantages are, it is very simple, we only have to compute these forces and then we're done. And we can get good results for small and medium sized graphs. And we can get empirically good representations of symmetry and structure. The problem is that the system is not stable at the end. So what we get depends a lot on our cooling factor and when we stop. If we don't cool down, this will go on and on and on forever, and uh, most of the time we will not get a good solution. So we have to make sure that at some point the algorithm terminates and we get something that's acceptable. Also, we have convergence to local minima. As you saw, when I put the L large but the constant small, at some point it just stopped and this was a local minimum, but it was not a good solution. We want to have a global minimum that means that we have to push over some hills. We might have to go to something worse first before we can get to the best solution. And that's something that often doesn't happen here. Also, it can take a long time. Computing the spring force takes number of edges. Computing the repulsive force takes number of vertices squared. But that's something that holds for basically all force-directed algorithms. There are some speed up uh, tools that you can use, but uh, those we will not take care of in this lecture. However, this algorithm had a huge influence. The original paper by Eats has about 2000 citations now. And this is the basis for many, many further ideas. One of those we will have a look at in the next part.